I've had this car for the weekend and quite frankly I don't want to give it back tomorrow but you know what I'm going to. Can it be driven as a daily driver? Yes it will behave just like a Prius just like a Nissan Leaf and it feels very well behaved but put your foot down and you know what comes next. Take care. Bye. <laughs> And that's how I ended a review of the 2011 Tesla Roadster 2.5. Frankly, I loved it to pieces. And the local Tesla rep used to joke with me that it was my car whenever I drove it, which was quite a lot because frankly, I loved the original Roadster to bits. The first car from the brand, the car that started it all. The original Roadster was sleek, fast, fun, and expensive. Made between 2008 and 2012, only 2,500 examples were officially made. It was the first series production electric car to make use of lithium ion batteries, as well as being the first series production car to use 18650 cells, cells which until that point had really only been used in laptop computers. And while it's a common misconception that the original Tesla Roadster was nothing more than an electric Lotus Elise, it was a ground up electric vehicle with the body engineered by Lotus for Tesla in my home county of Norfolk, England. In case you're interested, the Tesla Roadster's chassis is said to be stiffer than that of the Elise and the wheelbase is just a tad longer to help get all of those batteries stuffed into literally every available space. In fact, only 6% of the Roadster's components are shared between it and the Lotus Elise. Lotus engineered and built the gliders for the Roadster and then the cars were shipped to Tesla in California where Tesla added everything that made the Roadster a Tesla. A 53 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, a powerful three phase electric motor driving the rear wheels, which was, in case you're interested, about the size of a watermelon. Although Tesla stopped making the Roadster in 2012, remaining examples are still very much loved and very much enjoyed by those lucky enough to own them. And while some now exist solely as collector's cars, sitting in air-conditioned garages and not getting driven very far, others are still used as daily drivers or perhaps used as part of a larger fleet of vehicles that very often include other Teslas. But if you wanted to use Tesla Roadster of your own today, how much should you pay? The short answer, of course, is to respond with, well, how much are you willing to pay? But the slightly longer one is anywhere between 50 and 75,000 US dollars. But frankly, there's a whole lot more to it than that. Over the weekend, the last ever original Tesla Roadster to be made was advertised for sale online. It's an all white Tesla Roadster 2.5 that rolled off the production line in December 2012, and it currently resides in Switzerland. Although, to be clear, it's never actually been registered or driven on the road. It has the VIN number of 2500 and features all of the signatures of Tesla's original team on the rear battery case. Its interior is a special bespoke black and white affair with full carbon package, special VIN embossed badges and only 200 kilometers on the clock. Yeah, this car is very special indeed. It was when it rolled off the production line and since that point it's been treated like a very special celebrity, with the kind of care and attention to detail that is reserved for only the most treasured and important of trailer queens. As a result, the owner of this very special historical car is asking for a cool 1.39 million Swiss francs to hand over the keys. That's about one and a half million US dollars, 1.29 million euro, or 1.17 million pounds, obviously. This car is extremely special and in the automotive world, specifically the collector car world, first or lasts are pretty special. They either end up in museums or private collections. Therefore, asking 1.39 million Swiss francs to own the very last Tesla Roadster seems reasonable enough. Especially when the first series production Roadster, the car which ultimately became Elon Musk's personal Roadster, is currently flying around the solar system at more than 45 thousand miles an hour. But honestly, it's only worth that much if people are willing to pay for it. And we'll have to wait and see if that actually happens. And if I'm allowed to inject a little personal opinion here, I actually have a love-hate relationship with Trailer Queen specials. Cars are, in my opinion, built to be driven. So I always prefer to see a car being driven daily and looked after well 
and having driven plenty of classics as daily drivers, I certainly try and live to that ideal. However, I'm also aware that I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite here, as I used to own one of only two right-hand drive Mark II 1985 Golf Volkswagen City Stromers in existence, and I sold mine back to Volkswagen UK so that it could be restored and preserved for future generations. It's a long story, and it was both broken at the time and I didn't have money to restore it, and so I decided keeping it alive and kicking would be more preferable. The last I knew, it was on display, fully restored at Volkswagen's UK headquarters. So take from that what you will. As is usual with any collector's car, and the Roadster is certainly one, prices will fluctuate depending on the car's history, its condition, and its features. And while only two and a half thousand cars were made, there were officially several different variants. So let's look at those differences so we understand what we're talking about. The earliest of Roadsters, the so-called Roadster 1.5s, are the oldest, and so will likely have the lowest value unless, of course, they were owned by someone famous. And since several of my friends do own Teslas that were once owned by famous Hollywood types, I'd hate to bet against their individual cars commanding a pretty high price should they ever be sold. But in general, 1.5s are the lowest in value, and if memory serves, around 500 of those examples were made. Next up, we have the Roadster 2.0. It had a more powerful motor than the original Roadster and added some significant improvements to the interior. It had better heating and air conditioning, as well as better sound insulation and a small touchscreen near to the gear selector to give you information about the car's battery pack. It also had a more efficient motor and custom tunable suspension. And in case you're interested, the 0 to 60 was about 3.9 seconds, if memory serves. Then there was the Roadster 2.5, and they were the fastest and most accomplished on the road. They benefited from cabin tweaks, including better seats and even more soundproofing. There was also an optional 7-inch infotainment system and a few other subtle tweaks to improve the car's performance and its handling. On the outside, 2.5's got a new front fascia and different vents, as well as new exclusive wheel designs, technically only available to 2.5's. Both the Roadster 2 and the 2.5s were available as a Roadster Sport as well. These were higher end, more expensive variants with even more power and acceleration than the already quick standard Roadster. These did the sprint from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds. One final thing to note, unlike most cars which rolled off the production line and never got any major upgrades from the company which made them, Tesla actually offered Roadster owners the chance to upgrade their cars to the very latest specifications. How much you paid for this depended on which Tesla Roadster variant you had and how old it was, but Tesla would charge owners for the latest improvements in the form of an upgrade package. Even after the last Roadster rolled off the production line, Tesla continued this practice with its Tesla 3.0 upgrade package. This was the most expensive of any Tesla upgrade, and the 3.0 replaced the car's aging original battery pack with a brand new battery pack made of Tesla's latest cells. It also upgraded the car's power electronics module, added a special aerodynamics kit to make the car more aerodynamic, and carried out a few other major tweaks. The result was a range per charge in excess of 400 miles. The downside? its cost, more than 30,000 US dollars. The 3.0 upgrade was first offered by Tesla in 2014, so it's already getting quite old. But also, any car fitted with it is likely not going to be on sale, as most of the people who did shell out that kind of money for the upgrade probably had already decided to keep their cars. While I was researching Tesla Roadster pricing for this video, I found examples listed from anywhere from $55,000 US dollars all the way up to $85,000. If I had to pick the most likely price point though, it would be somewhere in the $60,000 range. Much, much more than a brand new Tesla Model 3. As to that lowest priced one, it's in Austin, Texas, and it's an early Tesla Roadster 1.5, complete with the original gear selector. I think it's a rarer beast for sure, as fewer were made, and you really don't see that many of them up for sale. And if you live in other markets, well, in some places like Europe, getting a Tesla Roadster is still possible on the used car market without too much of a hassle. In other markets like Australia or New Zealand, though, frankly, it's pretty hard. 
Of course, if you're feeling brave, there's always the chance of finding a roadster at a salvage auction a la Rich Rebuilds. And because roadsters don't supercharge, you shouldn't have to worry about being blocked from Tesla superchargers if you repair a salvage roadster and then get it back on the road. And in that case, you can expect to knock off a significant amount of money from the figures I quoted earlier, as you're going to have to rebuild your car before enjoying it. A few years ago, salvage roadsters were fairly common as insurance companies weren't sentimental about writing them off. But now it's a little different. The owners who still have roadsters tend to want to keep them. And even when they do get dinged up or even written off, it's more likely they'll get repurchased by the original owner and repaired rather than crushed. This is partly because of their rarity. Sure, they're not as rare as, say, a Bugatti Veyron or the lowly Austin Maestro, but they're still freaking rare. Sorry, I probably don't know what an Austin Maestro is. Um, it's a British car. My late sister had one of those back in the 1990s when there were more than 15,000 of them on the roads. I looked earlier today. There's 15 listed as Sawn, that's off the road, and only eight registered for daily use. Anyway, yeah, I'm digressing. Simply put, prices for original Tesla Roadsters are going up. If you're sitting there watching this cursing your luck because roadsters are now out of your price range, well, you're not alone. A few years ago, it was possible to get a Tesla roadster for a lot less, but I'm guessing Tesla's popularity, not to mention the fact there's a freaking Tesla roadster falling through space, <laughs> take that flat earthers, not to mention the fact that it's coming up on eight years since the last roadster was made. And I think you and everyone else who wanted one including me, may have missed the boat. If you do want one and you have the money, it's probably best to buy now rather than wait. Be prepared to use third-party specialists set up by former Tesla employees to repair your car, unless you enjoy spending a lot to have Tesla repair your car. And bear in mind that while the Roadster is awesome fun, it's certainly not the most refined of Tesla's cars. The Model 3 would be a better bet as a daily driver, of course, but who wants that when you could have a sporty two-seater? Not me. That's it for today's video. I am glad you dropped by. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment, and subscribe. And you can support us using the links below, which now include Ko-fi, Patreon, and Bitcoin. Don't forget, too, that you can chat with the rest of the Transport Evolved team and Transport Evolved fans on our free open Discord channel. There's a link below. But if you are a Patreon supporter, you'll also get special access to our Patreon-only Discord chats within that server. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our Charged Up patrons. Thanks go to Jeffrey Songs to John Lyons and Ray Jean Fellows, our self-driving patrons. And special thanks to our Starman level patrons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, and Sean Udaya. Going around the solar system in a Tesla Roadster. If you're looking for something else to watch on this channel, Google thinks you might enjoy this one. So check it out if you haven't. And I'll be back with more content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe and work to become a better kind of person. Strive for equality and treat others as you'd like to be treated. Oh, and please wear a mask if you're out and about. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, keep evolving.